Hey guys, how's it going? It's Tui Two Shoes here. And welcome back to It Moves Part 2. So this is night three. Firmly shut. We just a huge skull. So we just got back in uh, to bed. Get that flashing cursor out of there. Whoa. A banner long pole. It's too old and tall to make out details. But it looks like a uh, circle with some things coming out. Oh. We shift? Maybe if we run faster. Whoa. The eyes are flashing now. Hmm. Oh, the eyes are really flashing now. What do you think? That's right. You don't think. You're skull dummy. You're skull dumb. Oh, come on. There's gotta be something different. Hmm. Still the same mode. Maybe if we try to go back. No. Nope. There's this chain over here. Now just keep going forward. Oh, now the holy crap, they're like on steroids now. I, 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 I. <clears throat> Pentagram. Hello. Some kind of machine. Well, hello. That puzzle might have opened up something. There's nothing up there. So that's an exit. Okay, so we need to get there to open up another switch. All right. And just some more puzzles. Ooh. So maybe I need to turn off these, uh, maybe those are like indicators of what switches are left on. Awesome. Alright. Let's do this. So it seems like everything is pretty much locked up, so... Whoa. Picture some kind of green landscape. Picture's too bad shaped to make out any details. Make out, you said. <laughs> oh, no, switch. Are you? Are you? How are you? Well, I am fine, thank you very much. Thank you for asking. And how are you doing? Oh, you're the shy type, huh? Let's try back up. I wish I had a brighter light. Dang it, I was hoping that that door would be open. Hmm. <gasps> awesome. It's a mask. A creepy mask. <laughs> fellow there. Oh, you follow me? It's a mess following me. Take up the mask. Creepy mask. Oh, it is following me. I know. Let's see this. No, it's still there. That's weird. I thought I was falling. Maybe it will be a little bit. All right. So see, those are still closed. That's closed. Whoa, hello there, friend. Look at that guy. He's got a bag over his head. He obviously needs some assistance. So what door do we open up? That is the question. Is 
already did that over there. Maybe we open up this one over here. No, we already went down there. Didn't we? Yeah. Check over here. Oh, we did open up this one. Ooh. Rivers of blood. Or Kool Aid. <laughs> Whichever you guys prefer. Yeah, we do want to this way. So it seems like things are getting kind of a little darker. A little harder to tell where I am. Less illumination. Is that, is that open before? That's still closed, so let's check down here. Oh! This door is finally open. What the F? A bunch of eyeballs! Herboos! Eboos! Is the eyes balls? They sing to me. More of these things. I heard something like big move, so that might have been the the, the, the double doors down here. <gasps> so that big guy's out, so we gotta watch out for him, maybe. I don't know. Oh. Oh, snap. He came from, whoa. What the heck? That's some pretty messed up stuff. It's funny how certain words can remain hidden from your mind. But no matter how blatant or obvious they are, one word came to me that night, lying there in the darkness alone. Frightened aware of a rotten chance in the atmosphere. <clears throat> that voice is hard to do. Woo! A thick of the air, something had displaced it. As I heard the first casual twist of the bed sheets below, the first anxious increase of my heartbeats at the realization that something was once again in the bottom book that. That word, oh, a word. A word which had been sent into exile, filtered up through my consciousness, breaking free of all reposition. Repression. Reposition. <laughs> Gasping for air, screaming, <gasps> etching and carving itself into my mind. Ghost. As this thought came to me, I noticed that my unwelcoming visitor had ceased moving. The bed seats lay calm and dormant. But they had been replaced by something. False. I don't know what it said. I scripted too fast. A slow rhythmic rasping breath heaved and escaped through the thing below. I could imagine its chest rising and falling with each sordid, wheezing, gargled breath. I shuddered and hoped beyond all hope it would have leave without occurrence. The house lay as it had been the previous night in a thick blanket of darkness. Silence prevailed, all but the perverted breath of my as yet unseen bunkmate. I there, there terrified. I think it's our brother playing tricks on us, that's what it is. I just wanted this thing to go, to leave me alone. What did I want? Then something unmistakably chilling transferred it moved, it went away different than before. Then it threw itself in the bottom bunk, it seemed unrestrained without purpose, almost animalistic. For that lying thing, for that thing lying there in darkness, and which seemed went on terrorizing a young boy, calming and nonchalantly sat up. It labored breathing had become louder, as only a mattress, only a few flimsy wooden slats, separated my body from an unearthing breath below. I lay there, eyes filled with tears. Why are the first two letters uh, bolded? Maybe I should be like writing these down. I fear which were, cannot relate to you or anyone else course through my veins. I would have believed that I could fear heaven and heightened, but I was so low. I imagined that I was a sound of sitting there listening from below my mattress, hoping to cast the slightest hint. I was awake. Imagination turned to the unnerving reality. It began to torch, touch, and torch. The wooden slats which the mattress set on making a carpet noise. Running which I imagined fingers and hands across the surface of the wall. Whoa! 
That actually made me jump. <laughs> then, with great force, it prodded angrily between the two sides in the mattress. Even though in the padding, it felt as though something viciously struck their fingers into my side. I let out a mighty cry and wheezing, shaking. The movie thing in the bulk, but replied it and finally revived the bunk as it had done the night before. Small flakes of paint powered into my blanket from the wall as the frame of the bed scraped along it backwards and forwards. Once again, I was bathed in light, and there stood my mother, loving, caring, as she always was, with a comforting hug and calming words eventually subdued my hysteria. Of course, she asked what it was wrong, but I could not say. I dare not say. I simply said one word over and over again. This pattern of events continued for weeks, if not months. Night after night, I could not. I was awakened to the sound of rustling sheets. Each time, I'd scream as though it did not provide this abomination. With each cry, the bed would shake violently, stopping the arrival of my mother, who would spend the rest of the night in the bottom bunk, seemingly unaware of the sinister force torturing her son nightly. Along the way, I imagined to feign illness a, faint, a few times and come up with other less truthful reasons for sleeping in my parents' bed. But more often than I would alone for the first few hours of each night in that place, where the light from outside did not sit right, alone with that thing. With time, you could belong descent, desensitized to almost anything, no matter how horrific. I had come to realize that, for whatever reason, this thing could not harm me when my mother was present. I'm sure the same would been said for my father, but as long, but as loving as he was, waking him from sleep was almost impossible. <laughs> waking me under the hand was no trouble at all, thanks to the nightmares. Chapter 4 In the some kind of mutated slob baby heads that's like a giant sperm and that's the thing of Manesia Shooting poison starts at me? What the heck? It's really like the shooting poison starts at me. Run! Don't let him shoot you! Is Indiana Jones on? Yes. Go, young Indy. No more poison starts. Lawnmower or something? It's a really bad heavy lawnmower. That is. The heck? Those faces are super creepy. 
Did I sleep through the night? What's going on? My greatest fears were released, realizing the winter. The days grew short. The longer nights merely provided the wretch with more opportunities. It was a difficult time for my family. My grandmother, a worldly, a world, a wonderfully kind and gentle woman, had deteriorated greatly since the death of my grandfather. My mother was trying her best to keep her in the community as long as possible. However, dementia is a cruel and degenerated illness, robbing a person of their memories a day at a time. Soon she recognized none of us, and it became clear that she would need to be moved from her house to a nursing home. Before she could be moved, my grandmother had a particularly difficult few nights. My mother decided that she would stay with her. As much as I loved my grandmother and I felt nothing but anguish at her illness, to this day I feel guilty that my first thoughts were not of her, but of what my nightly visitor may do should it become aware of my mother's absence. Her presence being the only thing I was sure was protecting me from the full horror of this thing's reach. Man, I'm getting serious chills right now. Holy crap. My arms are just covered in freaking goosebumps. I rushed home from school that day and immediately wrenched the bed sheets and mattress from my lower bunk. Moving all the slats and placing an old desk, a chest of drawers, and some chairs were kept in the cupboard where the bottom bunk used to be. I told my father was making an office which her, he found adorable. I would be damned if I'd give that thing a place to sleep for one more night. As the darkness approached, I lay there knowing my mother was not in the house. I did not know what to do. My only impulse was to sneak into her jewelry box and take a small family crucifix which I had seen there before. My family were not very religious at the age I still believed in God and hoped that somehow this would protect me. Although fearful and anxious, being gripping the crucifix under my pillow, Tally with one hand, sleep eventually came as I drifted off to the dream. I hoped that I would waken in the morning without incidents. Unfortunately, that night was the most terrifying of all. Chapter 5 Urban Explorer I would love to see. Stack of notebooks. Stack of notebooks, stack of notebooks. There's a lady without arms. In a pink dress. Frank sign on the board saying, Whoop. Whoop. Feeling that someone invading your privacy, even though without no. Is still disturbing. What the hell is that? You are good. Hey, it's my old teacher. She's from Jupiter. Jupiter. Even if you don't know why they're here, you hold the greatest amount of fear for them. What the heck? That guy's eyes clawed out or something? A triceratops. Oh. What are those? Those look like almost like jellyfish, but they're like mushrooms. What the fuck? The sounds of screams are awful. They're even worse than they are. Jeez, man, this game is giving me the worst freaking chills. I probably have to follow that creature. We will. Piece of paper here. Knock, knock. There's a piece of text on his emotional. Whoa! What the? Why can't I leave? I'm so confused. Ah! Oh my 
god. Jesus. Seriously, how do I get out of this? How do I, the hell do I get out of this room? Oh my gosh. Why can't I leave this room? Seriously, this is getting annoying. Oh, I have to go that way. Weird. Filling cabinet. Another knock knock joke. Can't read it. So, school materials. Oh. Hmm. I'm not liking this. I don't like this at all. the F those things are. I think I can only go down. Bus or machine of some sort. Hmm. Oh, there's a sewer. It's like a maze. Are like having sex with like a man being forced out sexually with a man. That's what I, I'm not kidding, that's what it really sounds like. It sounds pretty messed up. What was that? F is this? What the F? Is that my bed or something? Oh, that's a bed. Oh my gosh. Like quiet nowadays. Is something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure is something wrong with your new room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. All right then. Um. I woke gradually. The room was once again dark. My eyes adjusted. I could gradually make out the window and the door and the walls. Some toys in the shelf. And even to this day, I shudder to think of it. Where there was no noise. No rushing the sheets, no movement at all. The room left lifeless, lifeless, yet not empty. Now I visited that unwelcome, amusing, hate-filled thing which had terror me night after night. It was not in the bottom bunk. It was in my bed. Out of my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Utter terror had shaken this very sound of my voice. I lay motionless as if I could not scream. I did not want to let know if I was awake. I had not seen it yet. 
and yet to see it, I could not feel um, I feel it. I was obs- obscured under my blanket. I could see its outline and I could feel its presence, but dared not look. The weight of its presence pressed down on top of me, a sensation I would never forget. When I say the hours passed, I do not exaggerate. Lying there motionless in the darkness, I was every bit scared and frightened of the young boy. It had been during the summer months, it would have been light by then, but the grass winter is long and unrelenting. I knew it would be hours before sunset, a sunset which I yearned for. I t- I was a timid child by nature, but I reached for a breaking point, a moment where I could God, these noises are just... Oh. No more where I could not survive under this intimately deviant abomination no longer. Fear and sometimes wear you out and make you uh, threadable. A, sh- a shell of nerves leaving only the slightest trace of you behind. I got out of my bed and I remembered the crucifix. My hand still lay under the pillow, but it was empty. I slowly moved my wrist around to find it. Minimizing as best I could the sound and vibrations caused, but not be found. I had either knocked it out of my top bunk or I had... I could not even bear to think of it. I'd been taken from my hand. Without the crucifix, I lost my sense of hope. Even at such a young age, you can be acutely aware of what death is, and intensely frightened of it. I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there dormant, passive, doing nothing. I had to leave that room behind, but how? Should I leave from the bed and hope that I make it to the door, or it faster than me, or should I slowly slip out of the top bunk, hoping to not disturb my uncanny bedfellow? Realizing that I had no stir when I moved, Trying to find the crucifix, I began to have the strangest of the thoughts. God, this is so, this is a messed up stuff. These like noises and sounds. And guys, I think we'll end it here. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'm going to wear your tissues. Bye now.